I promised you rendang turkey in the last video, didn't I? Rendang turkey it is. <laughs> Hey folks, I'm Aslin Bloor from linsfood.com and SMR, Singaporean Malaysian Recipes.com. Last year, I gave you guys tandoori turkey, where we smoked our turkey in the home oven with a piece of burning charcoal. This year, turkey cooked with rendang flavour. Probably my favourite curry ever. Nothing beats a good old beef rendang, the way my mom, my granny, my family cooks it. So in this instance, we're going to make our marinade from scratch and then we're going to marinate the turkey and roast it for three to three and a half hours for a small turkey that I've got here. The bigger the turkey, the more time you will need. I'll give you all the roasting times on the page for this video. So rendang. Rendang is it's an old, originally Indonesian curry that goes back a few hundred years and started life as a curry using buffalo meat. You can read more about it on my beef rendang post on SMR. And essentially, it has long been considered a Malay dish in Singapore and Malaysia. Beef rendang is a must at many weddings, at many Malay weddings, and certainly on the first day of Eid. So, rendang. No actual authentic recipe for rendang. Every family is going to make it slightly different. Now you want the recipe? It's up there. I'll leave the link below as well. So we're going to get started straight away in making a rendang paste or a turkey rendang marinade. Rendang turkey marinade? You get the picture. So this is how we do it. Soak our dried red chilies. Now I don't want to make today's turkey spicy so I'm only going to be using about 10 dried chilies. Now the type of chilies you use is also going to determine how hot your rendang paste is and therefore how hot your turkey is going to be. Pour some hot water and soak it for 10 to 15 minutes. Cover it to speed up the process. The hotter your water, the faster the chilies are going to soak. So the second step in making our spice paste is to make some carisse. So this, I've got unsweetened desiccated coconut. If you have access to freshly grated coconut or even the frozen grated coconut you find in Indian and Pakistani shops, by all means go for that. So karise is essentially grated coconut that has been dry toasted on a low medium flame or medium low flame for about five minutes perhaps even 10 minutes depends on how depending on how much of it you've got you can see it's already turning a lovely brown shade now this is going to be added to our chopper with the rest of our aromatics for step three in making our rendang spice paste or our rendang roast turkey marinade whatever you want to call it and this is exactly the homemade spice paste we would make if we were cooking a rendang curry. That's it. Our karise is done. I think it only took me about three minutes. And karise, guys, is an essential part of making a rendang curry. We're going to start with our paste. So I've got some chopped onions in there and ginger, galangal, garlic, a whole lot of lemongrass. We slice our lemongrass into rings for easier grinding. And then we've got, remember, a 
soaking chilies. You could drain them, rinse them if you want, but I don't bother. So place that in there as well. And our carice. And then we've got turmeric and some ground coriander. Now we just blitz this to a fine paste. If it's too thick and you want a little moisture, add a little bit of the coconut milk that we will be using to make our turkey marinade. So I just wanted to quickly touch upon the leaves that we will be using in our, in our recipe, in our paste and so on. I've got turmeric leaves. These are probably the only two left from my plant and um, this is what was in the freezer. I've got lots and lots of turmeric leaves that I chop off in the summer and freeze. Um, it's 30th of November today so not many fresh turmeric leaves left on the plant and I've got cafe lime leaves also from my plant. Cafe lime leaves are pretty easy to get in the UK. If you're in the US I'm sure there are sources for it as well. Now if you've got these leaves either both snip them up minus the middle vein and add it to your rendang paste. So once we've, we're done with our rendang paste we're going to lighten it slightly with a bit of coconut milk because rendang is made with coconut milk. Now you can see that my rendang paste isn't very red because I decided to not to make it too spicy. If you want a spicy turkey then by all means use 20-30 dried red chilies and of the spicy variety that's completely up to you. So once we've got the paste all we're going to do is slap our marinade on and rub it all over. So now that we've got our marinade in our turkey, we're going to cover it with cling film and we're going to place it in the fridge overnight or for at least one hour. If you're doing this for Christmas, do it the night before to free up your time the next day. Right, so let's say the turkey has had the one hour marinating time or preferably overnight in the fridge. What we're going to do is take it out of the fridge 30 to 60 minutes before you're going to cook it and then we're going to get it ready, do the final prep work for it to get cooking. Now I've made this with this particular marinade with goose, with duck, with chicken and half the time I stuff the bird. What I usually like to stuff it with is some turmeric rice, freshly made turmeric rice, preferably still warm so that it doesn't need time to warm up in the middle of your bird itself. So our turkey has had its marinating time, we're going to keep it simple, we're not going to, to, to stuff it, we're just going to flavour stuff it. So what have I got? I've got some, I've got a lemongrass, Now if you want to use, if you want to know how to properly use lemongrass, I've got a video showing you how to do it, um, which you, I'll give you the link for it, but you can also, but you, you'll also see the link to it at the end of this video. So we're just going to bruise this lemongrass. That means hit it down with the back of your knife. So essentially, you are releasing the flavors, the aroma, the essential oil. So we're going to place this in the cavity. And then I've got some galangal, because why not? I buy galangal in bulk and then freeze it because I can't, I can only get it online here where I am in the UK. So I freeze it so my galangal is soft and easy to cut. So stuff the cavity the turkey cavity with the galangal too. Galangal is a natural accompaniment to um, lemongrass. And then, should we do some ginger? Why not? No need to um, peel, just make sure that it's scrubbed clean at least. And again, we stuff that. And then, let's have some lime slices. 
because lime makes everything better. And again, it all goes in there. And then, since I've got some lime leaves, lime leaves are fairly easy to get um, in the in UK supermarkets. Tear them to allow the flavors, the aroma, and the essential oils to permeate your meat and your food better. So lime leaves, and then I've got some turmeric leaves. The aroma of turmeric leaves is the defining character of a Malay rendang, of a Malay beef rendang. Turmeric leaves are extremely easy to grow. All you need is to have access to some fresh and not previously frozen turmeric root, with, which in the UK, once again, is so easy to find. Natura does it, Ocado does it, Waitrose does it. So if you have access to fresh turmeric root, all you do is pot it in some compost, let a little bit of it peep out of the compost, and before you know it, you'll have shoots. But it's got to be during springtime at the very earliest. So the ingredients in making your rendang paste uh, the only thing perhaps that you'll find trouble with is the galangal. Galangal paste is easily found in larger supermarkets in the UK. Um, Thai Taste, the brand, but they both do their own version of galangal paste, which is essentially mainly galangal and pretty good. So, all done, marinated overnight, stuffed with aromatics, your, uh, slices of lime. So we're going to cover this with foil and we're going to roast it in a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius, 350 Fahrenheit, 160 Celsius fan. Okay, this is going in the oven which is down there and we're going to take the foil off after two and a half hours. So roughly about an hour before the end of cooking time and to let it brown and baste it lightly with the liquid in there. And then after three hours, because this is a small turkey, we're going to check to see whether the turkey is done. So rendang roast turkey. How? Would you serve it? Now that depends on what sort of a Christmas meal or festive meal you are having. Are you having a European type of meal or an Asian type of meal? So for example, if I was in Singapore and I'm having Christmas lunch for friends and this is what I'm doing, instead of roast potatoes and gravy and stuff here, I'd serve it with perhaps a little bit of yellow rice or turmeric rice. Now, I don't have a published recipe of that, but what I'll do is I'll give you the full recipe on how to cook nasi kunyit or nasi kuning, which is yellow rice, turmeric rice. On the, on the page for this video, I'll give you the full recipe for it. So if you want to serve it. Now on Lynn's food, link also there, I have a recipe for what I call spicy gravy. It's not spicy, hot spicy, but it's got lemongrass, galanga, so the same sort of aromatics that went into our rendang paste. Now that would be a great gravy to serve with this rendang turkey. Whether you are serving it alongside roast potatoes and your standard carrots, Brussels sprouts, or you're serving it with some rice, to do it Asian style. If it is a completely Asian meal, so treat this turkey like you would grilled chicken or fried chicken. So serve it alongside other sides that you would do with your Asian meal. So you'd have rice and perhaps you'd have a little bit of sayo lama, which is a vegetable, light vegetable, coconut based curry and a side vegetable dish like kangkong belachan, for example. So how you serve it really does depend on what sort of a meal you're having. So if we're doing this here for Christmas Day here in the UK, I'd have this, I'd have roast potatoes, I'd have Brussels sprouts, 
what else do we usually have? I'd have some carrots, perhaps not red cabbage with this. So we'd have those. And then I would certainly have the spicy gravy I mentioned before. So there you go. I shall give you the recipes, the link, etc., etc. The full recipe for this, the ingredients, the full list of ingredients on this page below this video. So there we have it. Rendang roast turkey. Even my vegetarian kids went, whoa, that smells good. So there you go. Now, if you enjoyed this recipe, the usual, you know the drill. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, turn that notification bell on so you know when I've got a new video out. Until the next video, I'm Aslin Bloor. I'll catch you guys later.